By the end of this video, you're gonna hear everything that I look for when people hit me up looking to get sponsored. And we're starting right now. What's up, welcome to Fly Ride. I'm Chris, and usually at the beginning of my videos, we start talking about things like crazy custom lights and things that you can do to make glowing fish and Star Wars toys and all of these type things. But today, it's a very different video. So, long time ago, I got really into cars when I was like 19. I spent tons of money on my car. I just, I just went after it with everything I possibly could. And because of that, I ended up starting a business in 2004. We called it Flyride. I love it. You've probably heard of it if you're watching this channel. Maybe, I hope so. Anyway, I spent way too much money on my car. And since then, since I was a young, young man, I stopped spending money on my cars. Prior to Flyride, the skateboard was my ride, but not just because I needed to get places, because I loved to represent a company. I loved skateboarding for Jer's Board Shop. In high school, I represented them so well, my name was Jer's. People called me Jer's because I always had on that Jer's Board Shop shirt, I always had that kind of skateboard, and man, that's all I talked about and dreamed about and thought about all through school. Later on when I got into cars, I was just trying to find anything I could get my hands on coilovers or brakes or anything like that. I, I used to do like the painted caliper mod. That was my OG days. But the dream when I got into cars was to get sponsored. Like just like back in the day, I used to get free skateboards and free shirts and stickers and all that stuff. And I loved it. And it was just this badge of honor, the fact that you were a sponsored skateboarder. And I've kind of found that that's kind of the way that it is in the aftermarket car world. I say kind of because one of the biggest ingredients that I used to have with the skateboarding thing was how proud I was to wear that brand, to represent those dudes. And I don't see that very much in the car world at all. I actually more see it like it's this notch on your belt. Like, yeah, I got that sponsor and that sponsor. Those guys gave me this, those guys gave me that. And then now you're gonna go approach somebody else and try to get them on your hit list. And that is not the way to go about it. <laughs> this is actually gonna sound kind of silly, but it reminds me of the JFK quote, the whole ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country, right? It's the same thing with sponsorships. It's like, don't just ask that dude for the thing that will help you. You really need to be thinking about what can you do to help that company? What purpose do you have? What value are you gonna bring to the table for that company? So that brings us to the Mazda 3. This is actually a car that I've had sitting around forever. My buddy sold it to me for 1500 bucks and it's just been sitting for two years. I finally paid for some back tags. My boy Mickey at Throttle set me up with DNA Garage. They hooked up the AC. I could drive the thing now legally, comfortably, and now I can use it for much more than just moving my body around. Because everybody thinks that I have a GTR because that is the car that I've chosen to specialize in. But I'm about to show you something at the very beginning. We're gonna talk about what's gonna happen next and you'll get to watch it happen here on the Flyright channel. Oh, little blue Mazda. You poor forsaken bastard. So this, <laughs> this is the Mazda 3. So here's the idea. If I'm gonna make any sort of an example out of this project car, not only do I wanna document all of it, but I do want it all to kind of make sense because I do think that one of the coolest things you could do to any car is put some wheels on it, put a drop on it, and put some cool lights on it. Even if you don't do anything crazy or fancy or gnarly big brake kits or you know, like, I don't know, are you gonna be a drift racer? Are you gonna be like a time attack winner? <laughs> Cause if not, you don't need crazy, crazy expensive stuff, but you should have quality stuff. If you're gonna spend the money, you don't have to break the bank just to get some good things. And that's exactly how we're gonna go about this whole build. So one of the first things that I did was I started looking around for suspension for the Mazda 3 and I found Raceland. And I didn't really know anything about them yet until I did some digging. I watched some Fitment Industries videos, got a little bit of the backstory. And what I realized was these guys are actually keeping their prices low in a really smart way. They're just dealing direct with customers and that's exactly the kind of company that I wanna work with. So I reached out to them and I was like, dude, your guys' whole business model is perfect for me to be able to make videos, show off your product, send people your way and know 
you're gonna take care of those guys. So this is the Raceland Primo coilover setup for the Mazda 3. And I'm gonna be doing the install. We're gonna work with some of our other friends, shoot some videos, have a bunch of fun. And actually Raceland does a way better job about showing you how to mount this kit than I do. So we'll just show you the fun stuff. Also, if you noticed, I have super gutted headlights. And so I actually reached out to my buddy at GTA Retrofits because I knew that he was dealing with the Mazda 3 lights at one point. So if you follow along on the build, you're gonna see as I mount some crazy G5 based by LED projectors from Sinister Retro Works into these actual brackets. Or retro quick brackets as some people call them. Putting badass set of projectors into your lights by just mounting them up. So there's actually all the little connectors and all that. That's gonna be a big part of this too. So if you want more information about this cause you have a Mazda 3, check out GTA Retrofits. Josh told me about these brackets and they're dope and I wouldn't have known about it if it weren't for him. So I definitely wanna show him some love. Have you go check out his site, I got a link for you in the video description below. Now I haven't talked about brakes yet, but I do wanna tell you this, is I reached out recently to my buddy Martin over at R1 Concepts. And I was like, I bought some rotors on Amazon for my wife's car. Is it gonna be safe? Is this weird little notch thing all right? He's like, yeah, don't even worry about that. But why didn't you hit me up? And I told him, I don't wanna just hit you up and ask for stuff. I feel like that's where people go wrong with sponsorships. Hey, I need this thing, or hey, I want this thing. Will you give it to me? Dot, dot, dot. I don't know, man. Are you gonna give them anything in return? Is it just because you want it, you should get it? Is that how sponsorships work? because I'm pretty sure it's not. What I try to tell people all the time is like, if I want to get the attention of a company like Milwaukee, for example, I wanna put their tools in my videos. I wanna talk about them. I want them to make sales because I was like, yo, this little cutting tool is perfect to slice into a set of headlights. And guess what? If I do a good job with that, Milwaukee is gonna have products that move. I'm not gonna be the big reason that they win because they're awesome without me, but I'm certainly going to be helping that because I see a dope brand, I wanna be in business with them, and so I even sent Milwaukee a proposal about working with me on this project. Being 100% honest, I was just stoked to hear back from Milwaukee after I sent them a DM on Instagram, they told me the right email to send my proposal to, and at this point, fingers crossed, things are gonna go well. Meanwhile, I've got other cool companies that have got on board with the project, like R1 Concepts and Raceland, and I've got Sinister Retro work sending cool stuff over. So I'm really, really excited about this. And my whole point in making this video is telling you how much I feel indebted to those companies to the point where I'm gonna make them videos that just keep on giving, that drive sales, that bring them customers, that tell you about them as people, not just as the brand that spit out some $400 product or something to me. So a little while ago, I said I stopped spending money on my car, but I did keep spending money on my business and on my learning and on new tools and basically my value overall to other brands, especially in the experience and the influence that I could bring to them and move people in their direction. And that has become way more valuable than all the cool parts I could have been spending money on over the years and it makes me way more valuable to any company that I potentially can be doing business with. So a couple bits of advice that you can use if you want to get a company's attention or tell them about your project or do something with them is tell them what you can do for them. That's just how we're all wired. We wanna hear about ourselves. I love to hear myself talk. I have a whole YouTube channel about it. It's ridiculous, <laughs> but listen. Tell them what you can do for them. Not that you're gonna make them rich or they've never seen anything like you're gonna bring to the table, but like literally, like what are you gonna do and how is that going to impact them? Don't let them figure it out, tell them. Just hit them up and be like, I wanna do this because I wanna drive this traffic to you, I want this outcome for you, boom. Yes or no, make it an easy yes or no. Do they wanna work with you or do they not wanna work with you? All right, so as a little bonus for listening to me talk about the project car and all this stuff, if you've made it this far in the video, I, I wanna give you something, or at least give you some behind the scenes access to something. The one missing ingredient that I have to my whole wheels drop and lights, whole like trifecta here, 
is the wheels. I really need to be working with a company that makes an affordable, high quality aftermarket wheel. It has to be those things. It can't just be a cheap rep company. I actually tried to buy some cheap reps. I hit up the company. They were a terrible company. It was not anybody that I would ever want to send you to. If you're watching my videos, I only want the best for you and I only want you to get quality stuff. So I started digging around more and I was completely shocked to find out that Koenig Koenig wheels, like in Need for Speed, the video game that I used to play nearly 20 years ago. Like these dudes have been around forever. They have affordable wheels that are crazy high quality. that are attached to other brands in the wheel business. Like do some research, watch Fitment Industries. I completely was blown away by all the stuff that I learned today about Koenig. But just yesterday, oddly enough, maybe not so oddly enough, but they're putting out something where they want to get proposals. So I'm telling you, if you want to give it a shot to get a sponsorship, I'm gonna do that. So you'll be competing against me as well, but I'm gonna give you access to that video that I send to Koenig. And you're gonna be able to pick it apart, see the things that I do well, see the things that I do bad. And if it's chosen, they are even going to critique some of these sponsorship proposals and let you know what you did right and what you did wrong. So if you're interested whatsoever, Number one, go subscribe to their YouTube channel. They have a YouTube channel that's got stuff from their podcast on there. Obviously they have a podcast. They're crushing it on Instagram. Go follow Koenig on social media, but check this whole thing out. I'm gonna show you behind the scenes. I'm gonna show you me going after this wheel sponsorship and how I'm gonna present myself, my company, and the value that I can bring to Koenig. So I'm gonna end this video with that and just say, cross your fingers if you're gonna compete against me, cause I'm gonna go get it, all right? I'll see you next time.